what you're looking at right here might just look like the game of Pong. And you'd be correct if you thought that, but there's something special about this. It was created entirely using GPT-4. It wasn't some crazy complex prompt. We're talking about one very basic prompt and it was able to generate the HTML, JavaScript, and everything needed to get this up and running. My mind is absolutely blown. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is jump into ChatGPT Plus with the new GPT-4 model selected from the drop-down menu. And we're gonna go ahead and ask it a very simple prompt. We're gonna say, I want to build a Pong-like game using JavaScript. Write the code for me and show me how to run it. To create a simple Pong-like game using JavaScript, you'll need to use HTML and CSS to create the structure and styling. Here's the basic implementation. Create an HTML index file. It's writing the code for us. Create a JavaScript file, pong.js. It's also writing the JavaScript we need to run this part of the system. All right, once it's finished the JavaScript file, it says to run the game, save both files, index and pong.js in the same folder. Open the index file on your preferred web browser. And then it stopped. We can go ahead and say continue and see what it had to say there. This is a basic implementation of a Pong-like game. To make the game more interactive and challenging, you can add more features such as player paddle control, event listeners to control the pad player paddle using keyboard arrow keys. And then it's actually writing out the code for that just based on us saying continue. We didn't actually ask it to do that. So I'm going to actually have it stop generating at this point. The cool thing about this is you can look at this. It's actually really easy code to look through. It's well structured. So you can see there's some constants in here like paddle width, paddle height. Uh, you've got the ball controls. So you've got the canvas width, the radius for the ball, the color. So you could come in here and you could edit this any way you want. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this code exactly as it is. We're going to copy the code and we're just going to use notepad and paste it into a brand new file. All right, so here I've just opened up Notepad on my Windows PC. I'm gonna paste the contents of the file that we copied over from GPT. We're gonna hit File, Save As, and we're gonna make sure that we save this as pong.js. Go ahead and hit Save, and then we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna copy the code for the HTML file, so the index.html, and we're just gonna paste that in as well. Once we've done that and we hit Save, we've got a directory that has two simple files and it has index.html and then it has the pong.js file, the actual JavaScript that runs everything. So now we're just going to open up the index file and there you go. So we've got a working game of Pong and the computer's playing itself. So what can we can do next is we can go ask ChatGPT to allow us to control the game ourselves. So I'm going to go back to the prompt and instead of where I said continue, I'm going to come back and edit that prompt and say, give me the JavaScript to control the game with my keyboard. We're going to submit that. To control the player's paddle using the keyboard, you'll need to add event listeners for key down and key up events. In the following code, I've added the functionality to control the player's paddle using WNS, update the Pong.js file with the following changes. All right, there we go. Very simple code change. With these changes, you should now be able to control the player paddle using the W key to move up and the S key to move down. We're gonna go ahead and make those changes to the JavaScript. We're gonna save it and then we'll hit refresh. That did something because now it is, there we go. All right, oh, I'm hitting it. I'm using the keys. The right side of the screen, use your up and down arrow. And then the left side of the screen, oh, this is kind of tough to get right. The left side of the screen, you use S and W. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to exactly become a championship Pong player, but it's crazy to see the power of GPT-4 and the fact that you can do this without any crazy prompts. You used to have to say things like, pretend you're a world-class programmer and you're doing all these things. Now you can just write simple, clear prompts and it ends up picking up the context and writing out usable code you can just drag and drop into something. I've also asked it to add things like scores to the game. And this is just a starting point. Think about all the other things you can do. In fact, hit me up in the comments and let me know what your ideas are, what you'd like to check out with GPT-4. I think we're just scratching the surface here. I hope you thought that was as cool as I did. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. Be sure to join my free Discord server down in the description. We've got several hundred people that are sharing these great prompt ideas for stable diffusion, AI, all things chat GPT. And a very special shout out to the first member of my channel, Vince Clortho. It's supporters like you that make all of this possible. Thank you so much. If you'd like to learn how you can become a member, I've got a link down in the description. There's also a join button right next to subscribe.